Hey, everybody. Welcome. Hey, Michael. I'm looking really bright. I'm going to change that. Hang tight. That's better. Can you guys hear me good? All right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. We're just going to give it a few more minutes and let everyone get online. Cool, cool. I'm not sure how many we have, but quite a few. So it'll be even more powerful in the energy. So how's everyone feeling? <laughs> Just okay. Um, I also wanna, um, so welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jen Cunnings. If you haven't worked with me before, I am an energy healer. I tend to work with clients in groups as well as one-on-one, -on -one, and we just facilitate um, going into whatever needs to be released, whatever's in the way, whatever's blocked, and um, basically clear the way for creation, which is what we're going to be doing tonight. And so, um, as I mentioned earlier, I was prompted to do this call and, and really help to work with more groups to see if we could just really dig into the deepest core roots, into the, the what I've been calling the core wounds um, that are essentially just been playing out, have been, been manifesting in your life as, you know, negative feelings, judgment, um, most particularly fear. I have seen fear and trust have been coming up big time. So I think we're going to place a little emphasis on that tonight. Um, but I will open up the lines to hear from you if there's something other than that that really seems to be, you know, up in your face. So I'd like to begin just for all of us to just take kind of a centering breath to get out of our minds and into our hearts and into our bodies. Because this obviously is not about you just listening in. This is about you receiving, but also you participating. So when we get into the piece where we're going to kind of start going into the wounds and into the energy, I'll be walking you through that. But I'm going to also ask you to really be actively participating so that you can gain the most benefit from it. So in order to do that, and I'm sure, you know, it's 6.30, we've had a busy day. I just had to get my kiddo settled, dinner. I had four sessions today. I commuted. I've been on the phone and just like, you know, setting the call up for tonight. So we want to just kind of wipe that slate clean so that we can more easily access us. So if whatever you're doing, you know, whether you're sitting down, laying down, driving, well, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. But if you're not driving, let's all just close our eyes for a moment. And we're going to connect in the group energy. And I want you to begin by taking some significantly deep breaths. And that means breathing not just in your chest, but all the way down into your lower belly all the way down into your root chakra. And on the exhale, truly letting go all of your day, all of your thoughts, all of your worries. I'm gonna breathe in some light all the way down. And we're just gonna let go of expectations. Let go of any part of you that is feeling guarded. Uh, I kind of feel like there's this, um, it's, it's kind of a protection energy, but it's, it's like a, this won't work for me energy or you know, this kind of stuff might work for other people, but not me. Um, and, you know, I think there's also, especially that in a group format, it's like, oh, I'm not being tended to um, individually. So, you know, I probably won't get a lot out of this. So whatever all that is, let's breathe in some beautiful divine light. And let all of that go. And just a few more. And 
And as you're breathing, just allow yourself to become a little more centered, connected into your breath, connected into your body. You know, just see if you can bring all of your awareness inside of you. Still hearing my voice and still aware of your participation, but really making this nice, warm, delicious connection with you. Sometimes when we have such, you know, busy lives, we forget and we come back, to, you know, inward and we're like, Oh, there you are. I've missed you. I haven't got to hang out with you all day. I'm sorry I've been neglecting you. <laughs> so it's important, as you I'm sure know, to connect inward in order to do this kind of work because that gets us out of our mind and it's our mind that keeps us distracted. If we have any, um, if we're going to have any luck, what's not the right word, in, in getting into these deep core wounds that I've been feeling coming up, it is literally imperative for you to be present and focused and aware of your experiences. So um, if you had a chance to watch the video I did last night, I had just gotten out of the pool, it's been kind of scrappy, but what I was talking about is I've been seeing in sessions and in the work I've been doing, you know, on myself, it's like we're not kind of we're not messing around anymore, right? We're not messing around with the small stuff, with the you know, I mean, not that not that it's always been surface stuff, but I feel like we're really being prompted to get deep, really, really deep into the roots, the core. So where we're still operating, what I'm what I say is like templates of fear, where we're still functioning in an old paradigm, an old reality that really truly no longer exists for us anymore, but we're kind of like dragging all this stuff along with us. And so it kind of muddies our water, right? And what, we're, what I feel like we're doing or we've done or we're about to do is just step on a really new clean platform, stepping into a new earth, stepping into a new path, stepping into a new body. So that's going to be the last part of our call, but you know, and what I've, what I've kind of set it up in thirds is so the first part, I, again, I would like to hear from you and what you feel has been kind of knocking at your door <laughs> is a session the other day was like, what's really barking at my door. And she said, she actually heard like barking in her mind. And it was, it was some real deep stuff that she wasn't, you know, that she thought she had already dealt with. And so I can't tell you how often I hear now, Oh, I have to deal with this again. Like I thought I already messed with this. I thought I, I, I thought I already dealt with my dad issues. I thought I was over, you know, I thought I'd forgiven them. I thought I had let go of my childhood. I thought I had, you know, healed these wounds. And so, you know, sure. Yeah, we've done massive work. Like those of us who've been on a path of awareness and shift and change, we have done huge, but it, even if there's just like a little remnants, right? So that's why I keep noticing it's like it's, it's, it could be just a little bit of leftovers you know some stragglers some some um you know whatever it is it's like even that what once might have been like two percent of the leftovers is becoming heavier and heavier and heavier and and again it's becoming more aware in our reality where it needs to be dealt with so what i've been again seeing most um and this <laughs> is personally too is the inability to really let go, like the saying, let go, let God, um, to surrender your control, right? The part of your ego that feels like it has to, you know, take care of everything, get it all done. You know, if, if I don't do it, nobody will. And I'm not supported in doing that. So, you know, I can't trust that, that things are going to be taken care of because at some point in my life, that didn't happen. I wasn't loved, nurtured, supported the way I needed to be. And therefore this world is in a trusting place. So this has showed up. I mean, I can't even count. Um, you know, some of you on the call, we've actually talked about this. So that's a big one. And I have yet to come across anyone that is not dealing with that on some level, whether consciously or unconsciously. Um, another, and, and then it's, so fear's best friend, so fear and control, and then their best friend is unworthiness over here. So any part of you that feels like you're not good enough, that you still compare yourself to others, that you're not doing enough, that you should be doing more. And, and this is the energy of, I should, 
I should, I should. Um, I wish I had, you know, I wish I did. Um, it's, it's anywhere where you're not accepting yourself, where you are, who you are and everything. So these two guys kind of hang out hand in hand. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know once we get into the energy, if we're going to tackle both, but what I'm asking and why I'm, I'm kind of talking in this part of the call, I'm, I'm going to unmute you guys in a moment. And I was setting the intentions earlier. So for everyone who, sorry, there goes some energy clearing already. So for all of you on the call, what I was asking earlier as I just connected with everybody in is for everybody's higher selves to come in, to be connected. Um, and for every part of you that is still holding on to a core wound, for every part of you that does not want to let go of control because it's too scary, I'm asking for all these energies to be revealed tonight. So I, it's like just by talking about it and just by opening up the dialogue and, and your willingness to be here and your willingness to be open, we can really start to get digging deeper, deeper, deeper. And I'm going to walk you guys through a visualization to assist you with this. but. Right now, I'd like to unmute the lines and just see if anyone would like to um, offer up personal things that are happening to you that relate to what we just talked about. And you can do in the chat or you can, and those of you on the phone, I can hear you. Don't everybody talk at once. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's fine if you don't want to share, but I, if, if you want to um, put something in the chat, if you don't feel like talking, uh, it just helps because whatever whatever's going on with you and whatever's going on with me is going on with the group. So I was um, just thinking that we could. No. Hi. a lot of future anxiety coming up. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, so worry about what's next. Worry about, um, you know, is everything gonna work out okay? I tend to absorb other people's fear. Okay, good. Creating negative scenarios, good. Okay, so um, to talk about, I've had, can I be successful? Oh, I see. Can I be successful like everyone else, right? That comparison energy. Am I doing enough? You know, how come them and not me? Why does everybody else get the good stuff, but I have to struggle because, you know, again, there's that, I can't really trust this place and I have to do it all myself energy. So who has that? I can, I have to do it all by myself and it's been really hard and everyone else gets the good stuff and all that. So what, what that really is, is that part of you that's not, that wants to stay in control and try to figure it out all on your own. Okay. So that is the epitome. So that, 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 that core wound is the fear. I can't trust the universe, God, or anyone else to do it because I've been failed before. So I have to do it all myself and it's a struggle. So we just perpetuate. It's like getting on the merry-go-round. If I keep trying, right. If I keep you know, going after this job, or if I keep dieting, or if I keep blah, 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 something might change, but then we always revert back to the same thought patterns, and these thought patterns have been playing out. I had a visual the other day when I was working on a client, it was like our, our, our heads were big computers, and we had those old three and a half by five or whatever, those floppy disks, we had, or even flat, like if you were to imagine like flash drives plugged into our brains, and they're just running these old programs of fear, right? So what I've been getting to do is, again, just digging into those, pulling those programs out, which really is, you know, pulling out the core wounds of fear so that we can clean that operating system. We can wipe out that hard drive and then create a whole new operating system. So, um, and then Christy, you mentioned about absorbing other people's fear. And absolutely, we, we do pick up other people's energy. But what I've also come to realize is that 
if we don't have a vibration of that energy within us, if it's, you know, to use Abraham's words, um, if it's not a vibrational match, it's really impossible for us to pick up their energy if we're not already carrying it around. So not to say that we don't absorb other people's energy, we do, but we can also kind of flip the perspective of that and say, well, that's not my energy, but hmm, that is maybe showing me something about what's going on within me. So if we're absorbing fear or absorbing sadness and we notice it comes from kind of like left field, like we walk into a room and then boom, yeah, picking up on people who are stressed out. And, you know, we do this when we walk into a physical room with people, but we're also picking this up in the collective too, right? It's, it's, it's like the whole, the whole earth is like vibrating in different frequencies and we're all these, you know, perceiving telepathic, <laughs> you know, transmitting energies. And so of course we're going to pick it up, right? And of course we're going to maybe absorb it and think that all of a sudden it's ours. And again, it, it may be that we're actually picking up energy and perceiving it outside of us and amplifying what's already there. So we want to, you know, send back. So we can always just say, oh, this is not mine. I'm sending it back. But we also want to, that's, this is where we want to dig a little deeper and find out where that energy is still living within us, which is what we're going to do tonight. So I'm not sure what to do next. Yeah. A lot of energy about future. And I'm feeling, so as I kind of tap into the group too, feeling a lot of this um, kind of heart anxiety energy, it feels a little panicky. Yeah, stressing out. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Michael. So the picking up energy from people who are stressing out and then you, the mirror, comes up for me recently, seeing things from my inside because everything we experience, everything is a mirror. Nothing is a coincidence. You know, if somebody treats you shitty, it's not a random happenstance, okay? We are attracting experiences in our lives to show us what's inside us period, end of story. And it becomes our job to go and be the detective on the inside, which is what we're about to go do right now. So I want you guys to put on your detective hats. Anyone else wanna pitch in? So we have, so I also wanna see if you, can you, cor can you understand the correlation between the fear of, I've gotta control outcomes, I've gotta figure this out, I gotta know what to do, and then the anxiety that's coming up in adjacent to that because the anxiety is like that belief that you can't trust anything else to, 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 to help you through this, right? It's, it's that energy of I'm separate from the universe. I'm separate from God. And so we want to tap into that, that, that energy that's within us that's not the ego part that wants to control. We have to allow the ego, to, to ego's part, the control part, the fear part to start to really integrate back into our wholeness. This is where we begin to want to, um, it's like, okay, so fear, fear is not our bad guy, you know? Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody back up. So hang on two seconds. Uh, didn't know how to do that. Why isn't it showing up anymore? Okay. So you guys can unmute yourselves if you like. <laughs> Rely on me to pick up commitments. Yeah. So there's a lot of trust stuff there too. Yep. Good stuff. Um, so what I was saying is fear is not our bad guy. Fear is, is part of who we are and, and, what we've, what we've been experiencing. So we're not wanting to like punch fear in the face or kick it out the door, but we're wanting to accept it as part of our wholeness and part of our experience so that it doesn't have to exist as this push, as this resistance, as this, you know, up in my face. Because all these experiences that are showing themselves to you through these mirrors, through these reflections, through these life experiences, they feel uncomfortable. So we often just, you know, we want to just, get away from it and we run away. And so we hide and we ignore and we, you know, persevere and we just, you know, see if we can figure out something different, but that stuff is always knocking at our door and it, and we're just slamming the door right in its face all the time. I don't want to feel that fear. I don't want to feel that unworthiness. I don't want to feel that shame. Stop it, stop it, stop it. But if we just opened up the door, went digging down into those core wounds, into those boxes in the basement and up in the attic, and we started opening up all this stuff, 
and we kind of looked at it and we leaned into it and we allowed ourselves to kind of feel into it, it can actually start to integrate and transmute into your wholeness, into your light, into who you really are. It doesn't have to operate outside of you. It doesn't have to operate in resistance. So hopefully that makes sense because when we talk about clearing these core wounds, we're not necessarily going in there, you know, yes, we're releasing them, but it's more so allowing them to integrate in the whole. If you guys have ever done any um, shadow work, there's a book called um, Shadow Effect, and then there's another one, Chasing, oh, someone chime in, Chasing the, the Dark. Anyway, there's two Debbie Ford books. So the shadow side of ourselves is our fear, it's our worry, it's our shame, it's our guilt, it's our unworthiness, and it's all those things that we tend to continue, tend, tend to want to push down but it's if we can embrace the shadow and bring it into our light and bring it into wholeness, that can create that really clean template that we were talking about. So we are gonna start to go digging. All right, we got one more. Oops, okay, problem stopping smoking. Used to make me have less anxiety. Now it's more of a procrastination and moving me slower to goals and how I want to live my life. Opening a business and have a clear mind. So it's, it's, it's not really the smoking, it's, it's the judgment that you have about it, and it's, it's your relationship that you've created with it, okay? So it's when we create things like smoking or whatever it is, you know, shopping, drinking, you know, all these things, they're just the symptom of the part of ourselves that's in the resistance, okay? So it's, it, this is the outward, the smoking would be the outward manifestation of whatever the fear the anxiety the judgment i can't do this um i'm a procrastinator um you know it's it's the parts of us that don't aren't in full acceptance of who we are so if say we're um you know say procrastination for instance and if i procrastinate and then i judge myself for it you're still getting something out of procrastinating. It's still serving you in some way or another because, you know, maybe if you didn't procrastinate, you'd have to really step out and really be, you know, your bright shining star and, you know, have to serve, you know, a lot of people and make a lot of money and then you'd have a lot of responsibility and that just feels too big, right? So then we create these, these circumstances where we want to feel, um, you know, safe, right? So again, back to the trust and the fear. So it's like, we're always looking for safety. We're always looking for a sense of comfort. And really we've been striving for this outside of ourselves, but it's not true. Cause this is, this is the stuff that's been hanging out within us and it's hanging out in the deep, dark shadow places. And again, what we want to do tonight is start to bring those up. So oh, let's see. Seems like once I say out loud that I'm in the flow of life and feel great, that's when shit hits the fan. Absolutely. Because it's like, oh, everything's going really good. I'm going to start to become more whatever, more abundant, more fruitful, more safe, more happy. And then we have this like stop button that says, oh no, if we allow this much joy and happiness in our life, things are going to go really bad. So whoop, put on those brakes. And we unconsciously start to, you know, or vibrationally start to create things that are going to slow us down. So that's the other thing. It's like, we're really being called to step up and step out and, and be brighter lights and be, um, you know, greater expressions of who we really are. But it's going to be really hard to do that if we're still carrying this old stuff with us that we don't want to look at, you know, it's like, I'm going to carry around you know, this old storage unit of my shit, but I'm never going to go in there to look at any of it yet. I want to fly and take this storage unit of stuff with me, you know? And so we want to go into the storage unit. We want to go into the basement. We want to go into the body and find these places that are incongruent with you moving into your love, your love of self, your divine self, the, the full expression of what you're here to do, you know, as a being, and everything in the way of that. So I know it's kind of a tall order. <laughs> and I, you know, I mean, just be open to, to, to shift whatever. Sorry, I've got crystals down here I started playing with. And my little, my little amethyst and my little lapis. Um, and then my celestite. Isn't she pretty? Um, and then my selenite, which has been getting lost of sun. So 
Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Just to show you guys, we have some crystal energy and flow. We've got some cards here too. Um, but really the other thing that's come up around all this stuff and I probably need to get into the energy. Oh good. Perfect timing. The other thing that's been coming up is this, there's no reason for us not to be able to shift all of this right now. We just don't believe we can, right? There's no reason that this should take a lot of time because there is no time. There really is just now. So part of the creation exercise we're going to do um, towards the end of the call is going to be about stepping into a timeline that's already in existence. And that like landed in my download and I was like, oh, that's going to be so much fun for the call to do. A different, a different um, experience and manifestation. And I actually only kind of practiced with it once. So it's not something I've really done before. I just kind of got the awareness to do it and that was really fun. So any questions before we dive into the next phase? All right, I really appreciate you guys being open and sharing. Um, I will go ahead and, yeah, everybody's muted. Okay, great. All right. So back to your connection with your body. Um, and again, this is your level of participation in terms of allowance will reap you the greatest rewards here okay so um if if you're in a place where you're going to be distracted go ahead and, and continue to follow along but um go ahead and listen to this later because all the you know we're not just talking ourselves through this we're connecting in the energy we're bringing in our higher selves and we're going to kind of facilitate energetically for us to start to bring this up so you can listen to this all, a recording will be made for everybody um, you can listen to this as often as you like um, to just kind of keep moving through that. So, okay. Um, everybody just go ahead and be in a place of relaxation. And take a few more of those deep breaths. And I'm going to be quiet for a few moments and just kind of feel into <coughs> what's going on. It's got some throat issues coming up. Whew. And just again, making, using your breath to allow your body to become more spacious, more expansive. You can almost imagine as you're breathing in, just light starts to fill up your body. And we're going to begin by using the breath to connect into the body. All right, we have a little helper in the energy. All right, so what I want you to do is imagine, or you can use the statement to just call in all of your energy, all of your consciousness, all of your light, and imagine you're bringing all of you back into your body. All right, so as you become kind of feeling more whole, more connected, I want you to now, you, 
Uh, express the statement in your mind, I now merge and connect with the divine consciousness of my body. And here's where we move into the space of allowing, of surrendering, and trusting that the body can help facilitate you to pull up these deep core wounds. So it's like you're meeting your body in a new way for the first time. Connecting in with its perfect intelligence, connecting in with its just infinite knowledge. And with the support of your higher self, of all your light and all your energy, and with your body, we're going to ask your body, so you can state this in your mind or say it out loud, body, please show me and reveal where my deepest core energies of fear, unworthiness, anywhere I've been feeling this anxiety, this worry, everywhere I have felt unsafe in the world, Everywhere I have felt separate from others, from God, from the universe. Anywhere I ever felt abandoned and alone. Everywhere I ever felt completely deserted without help. I want your body, ask your body to really pull up in from the deepest corners Anywhere you've been hiding these deep, deep, deep hidden way energies. And you can imagine as you breathe into your body, you're kind of shining light into all the cracks and crevices, into all the corners. And it's like you're saying to your body and you're in your knowing saying, all right, enough. I am choosing to not keep this fear hidden away any longer. I know that this fear has served me in protecting myself and making sure that I take care of myself by running my own ship and running my own life. But I know now as I move into this new phase of my life, as I move into a place of being this expansive divine expression of me, that I have to allow help in, to allow myself to trust God, the universe, allow myself to trust the higher, not the higher power, but the, the part of me that hasn't been as present as my conscious ego mind. So we're just asking your body to really dig deep, deep, deep. And wherever these core wounds that are ready to be addressed today, we're asking that the very origin of which they came into existence be revealed and be brought up into your awareness now. Sometimes I see us like kind of digging into this well that hasn't even been, you know, it's been abandoned and we're just taking this bucket down and dipping it all the way in and pulling up this kind of sludge. So just allow your body to do this work for you. Allow it, allow your body Pull this up. We're not forcing anything. We're not, you know, striving to make anything happen. We're giving the instructions to our body, to our higher selves. So just kind of see it dig or feel it kind of dig up. And notice the part in your body where you feel this most intensely. So you 
may be feeling a physical sensation of where these energies are been kind of hanging out. Um, for those of you who are more visual, you might get a sense of where they are or what they are. Um, you might just have a knowing or maybe some memories flash in. You might be feeling some heaviness or some pressure. So whatever's arising for you, we're just asking that you, you're going to perceive this in a perfect way for you. Absolutely perfect. And we're just digging it up. And take some real deep breaths and we're gonna allow the body to become even more spacious. So expand your energy out into the room that you're in, giving yourself some more space for this stuff to come up. And as this begins to surface, I want you to, whatever is, um, whatever is attracting your attention, so whether it's a physical thing, awareness thing, I want you to just begin to send some love, some light. So if you feel that in your tummy or you feel that in your heart, you could put your hand there and just say or in your mind say, I acknowledge you, I feel you. I see you, I love you. And you can imagine that if your hand is on your body somewhere, you can imagine that your hand just starts to pour liquid love into your body. And it's like all these places that have been stuck are now being embraced, hugged and loved by the light that you're bringing in. And you can say, I love you. I know you have been a part of me. You have served me. You've kept me safe and guarded. You help me survive and feel normal. But I'm asking you now to become part of my whole and part of my light. I'm asking you now to come out of the shadows so that I can be with you in wholeness, in oneness, and in love. And we're going to send some beautiful gold and swirling energy to just kind of help really loosen this up and allow everything to come up into light. And we're basically commanding because you are a powerful being. You are powerful to shift and change energy. And so you're asking all these parts of you to merge into your oneness and into your light. But if any part of you that is feeling unwilling to cooperate or um, doesn't want to become part of your whole, or even just intending that we send that part out of your body and up into light. So we're just going to send some swirling energy starting from the bottom of your feet. And it begins to spin counterclockwise super fast, running up your body. Pardon me. And we're just going to allow everything to either convert into love, convert into wholeness and oneness, or to spin out really fast. And wherever is feeling, uh, wherever in your body is feeling most sensational or anything that feels kind of stuck, I want you to just Take this spinning light, like a golden ball of light, and let it just kind of spin around that area. For some of you, I'm feeling root and sacral. Uh, some of you, I'm feeling throat. And 
And it's like we're just loosening up anywhere it's these old core wounds have been stuck. If any of you have had any um, memories come up or flashes, um, I want you to see that situation being cleansed in like a golden shower. We're just bringing this golden light in to all these spaces. Now, now we're going to bring in a white light coming in through the top of your head, kind of showering down. Almost as if, as if angels are just pouring their love, their appreciation, just pouring this liquid white light all the way through your body. I want you to open the top of your crown really wide. Some of you are feeling like you're not really wanting to receive that, not, will, not deserving to receive it. So if you just open up your crown, open up your heart, and imagine this light comes in, just showering you with appreciation for the perfection that you are, for the amazing light that you are just loving on you with with compassion for all of your struggles for all of your hardships it's like acknowledging like we know how hard it's been for you so you can receive now you can rest now you can let go and trust. And just feel yourself open up to allow this energy to wash through you, filling up your heart. You can imagine this beautiful love and appreciation kind of moving through those parts of you where these energies have been stuck all this time. And as it begins to kind of fill your heart up, your whole energy expands out even further, allowing it to expand out just hundreds of feet in all directions. So if you can imagine this light in your heart becomes so amplified with love and light, it just expands out, shining out in all directions. And now bring your attention to your feet. And you may notice that your feet, you've got one foot on the new path and maybe one foot on the old path. Just bring your awareness into where your feet might be. Are they ready to step into a place of creation and manifestation? Are they ready to leap and to fly into new experiences that you desire? Are they ready to take you where you want to go? Or your feet, or maybe a foot, still kind of connected back into a place of safety and smallness and, you know, not really ready to take the big leap forward. 
So whatever that is to you, kind of feel into where your feet are. And so for those of you that feel more connected into old, it's like standing in your old home when you've already bought your new home, right? It's like, why would you keep going back to your old house when you have a new one? And where this is going is that you've already built your new house. You've already, you can already build or have already built your new life. And we're going to move into that in a moment. But why would you keep going back to the old house, right? Because it's safe. It's comfortable. It feels good. It's cozy. It's familiar. You know, we don't know what's going to happen in this new house. You know, what if something goes wrong? What if it's too big? What if it, you know, what if I don't like my neighbors? But this new house has so much more room for you. It's like a new body, a new life. And yet, you know, we, we have this familiar attachment to this old. So see yourself kind of still somewhat planted in this old reality, in your old home, on the old earth. And just take a moment to observe how that feels. Right? Do you feel connected? Do you feel trapped? Do you feel like you just be kind of doing the same thing, spinning around instead of moving forward? So whatever is showing up for you, I want you to see if you can kind of bring out whatever you need to uproot yourself from this old place, from this old life, old house, old earth, and move and step into your new life. So if we need to cut any cords, remove any balls and chains, if we simply just need to step out into the new, see how it feels to Detach yourself fully from the past, from the anchors. And just walk right into your new path. And even if you don't know what that looks like yet, because we're about to move into another exercise to do that, I want you to imagine that you've actually stepped into a new life, a new body, a new home, a new earth. And I'm gonna pause there for a moment before we move into the next portion. And I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you guys. So just take some deep breaths as you're coming back. That was a lot of energy moving there. So, um, Take a moment, please, you know, get some water. Um, what I was noticing most, I guess, predominantly is uh, that heaviness of what all that stuff was that was anchoring us back. So, um, you know, especially when we brought up you know, being in the old house, it's like I could feel the familiarity of that. And, you know, a couple of you mentioned in the chat, like there's, there is that fear of the unknown, you know, we don't know what's next. And we don't because it's big. And <laughs> we don't know what it's going to look like. And that's why the we're requiring. Uh, I, I think what's happening is it's, it's like we're really being asked to trust so significantly. But trusting is really hard to do if we're still anchored in old fear. So if we're, what we were doing is uprooting from fear, our old reality and moving into something new, and then, and then we're going to, in the next place, create kind of a whole new timeline for ourselves where it's like a blank slate of creation. So whereas 
even though we're moving into new and that's the fear of unknown, it's also moving into the place of creation. So the whole you know point of me putting the title in, um, cause I know we haven't tra- ta- uh, tapped into that yet, but we have a choice, right? We have a choice to exist in fear in the past and we have a choice to exist in the new and in the now, right? It's not the future, it's the now. And so often this anxiety and this fear it's, it's about the future, but it stems from the past because of past hurts and past pain and, you know, places where we weren't supported, safe and love and protected and secure. So the worry about the future is really just an old tape player from the past. As we uproot ourselves and put, our, and put ourselves into a new experience, that doesn't have to, we don't have to carry that with us. So even though, you know, we're moving into what's the, um, Oh, it's one of those songs, you know, where they're coming to where they're coming to America, and it's like the whatever the potential of the new land, right? So we're moving into a place of pure potential, but we do have to choose it, right? We have to choose to say, "This is, I would like to be in a place, you know, in my in my now, in my in my wholeness, where I can choose to create, and I can choose to create from a place of." pure potential and desire, right? So that's why we have to cut the cords with the past so that you can set yourself up to begin choosing new. And it's, and it's not just like waiting for, you know, I mean, good things to happen. Of course, good things are happening, but it's you being a conscious creator. And there's a responsibility for that, that I think some of us are kind of wanting to shy away from because Oh, wait, I'm responsible for creating my life. Oh, wait, I'm responsible for the upliftment of myself and maybe even humanity. Oh, you know, I'm responsible for being, um, you know, having to, to be conscious about what I'm desiring in my life. And then even knowing that I could actually powerfully create that, you know, and, and we, we, we do, we tend to shy away from that responsibility. And so that's why that's kind of that going back to that old house analogy is it's familiar and it's comfortable. It's that old pair of slippers. I don't know what these new shoes are going to feel like. They might feel tight, but who, man, they look good, you know? So, um, that, that's again, the, one of the reasons why I put this call tonight is because I'm really feeling this come up so strongly and seeing so many of us, including myself, by the way, because everything I'm guiding us through is stuff that I'm going through. It's like, I'm not on the other side of pure potential of creation, mind you. So <laughs> in the, in, you know, in, in, in the essence of transparency, this is everything that I'm going through myself. And as I facilitate myself or even other people facilitate me, you know, I get guided to help facilitate others so we can do this together because coming in a group like this can be so much more powerful than if I sat in my room tonight and, you know, went to navigate through this, you know, with my journal or meditation, like, I mean, no offense, but I'm kind of like using you guys to help me too, right? <laughs> so, um, it's a win-win. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause um, or unmute rather. And I would love to hear what you guys were experiencing, any feedback, any place that still feels um, really stuck. Um, you guys feel free to chat or talk. Everyone's unmuted. And Michael, you know I'm going to pick on you because I saw you yawning like crazy the whole time. Yeah. Um, so some stuff that was coming up for me was when you told me, you know, ask me rather, where are your feet? And the feet were one um, barely on the past path and then one foot firmly grounded on the right path. And there's this nice big space in between. Uh-huh. And that's what um, got me thinking about the most because there's just this big wide gap between my feet. Yeah. <laughs> and that's been my transition, that's been my thing going on. It's like, I really just want to move right here. You know, I'm getting all the messages that everything's really happy really quickly for me. And there's all the good signs that are happening. It's nothing like dark forever. And it's, you know, I'm ready to get to that happy ending now. Mm -hmm. So So there it is. Were you able to move some of your energy to the new path? Um a bit um 
it's it's kind of like a path. One path's right here, one path's right here, and I'm kind of pivoted toward a 45 degree angle. So I like to just be fully shifted. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. Well, the next exercise might help. Um, but what I kind of pick up from you is mostly the solar plexus about that. Like, yeah, I don't know if I'm really wanting to be that powerful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hair I don't know what that's about. It's like this. It's like this. Hmm, I don't know about that. You know, I'm just going to hang out and twirl my hair because I don't know if I really want to be that powerful. I don't know if I want to be responsible for all that creation. And you know, I literally saw people like that today doing that. Oh, how funny. Yeah, that happened yes. twice today. I was talking to another client doing that. Yeah. I don't know why this is coming up, but it's almost like that. I'm just going to sit here and twirl my hair and you know, maybe I'll get around to being this amazing and powerful creator that I signed up to be. Maybe, but maybe I'll just hang out and film it a little longer. <laughs> so the other thing that's coming up around that, Michael, um, and this is just a sidebar for you to maybe journal about, is, you know, what if you were so powerful in a, another experience, in another reality, in a past life or whatever you want to call it, where your power, you know, where shit went wrong, right? Where you you were this, you know, perfect expression of who you were in your power, in your truth, in your authenticity, and then, you know, you blew shit up, people blew you up, set you on fire, or you hurt people, or it just, it just went all wrong. So see if that sits with you a little. And yeah, that, that such comes up for me that, you know, if I move into that, then I'm not going to have my safety. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to be safe or other people aren't going to be safe. Yes. So um, you might want to just ask, you know, sit down with the journal and ask the question like, you know, what is it about being powerful that feels unsafe to me? And what would it take for me to feel like I could embody and express my power you know, with the integrity that I am now. Okay. Do you have your phone on there? Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to text you my card reading that I did for myself. Okay, cool. You can do that. Okay, I'll mute myself for somebody else. Okay. Um, all right, so we have... Um, you can feel the core belief breaking up in the darkness of your chest. I'm talking about the home, like it's about being in the familiar. Okay, good. That was for you. And your feet were just laying on the couch in the past. Um, really good feeling to understand leaving my old house behind and stepping into the future. It was a good feeling. Okay, good. Yeah. So, like I was saying to Michael, in the next part, we'll, we'll, we're going to experience stepping into a new place. Um, it may not be 100% comfortable, and that's okay, right? We, we might be, again, asked to kind of let go, let God, surrender into what is, knowing that this new path, this new home, these new experiences that we're here to um, embody and move into are perfect for us. And so I know that we have to move past the logical mind in that and, and let go of the feelings, but that's why we're here. So um, for those of you, but did, I guess, did everyone feel like they were able to at least tap into one of their wounds or some of their wounds? Were they able to at least feel or perceive that that was coming up for you in your body? Did you feel that? Yeah. Awesome. Anyone have trouble with that? Anyone feel like they couldn't get anything at all? I feel like I go live and it feels amazing. I go back to the new. Okay. So, Chris, are you saying you say then go back to the new house and someone else lives there and you don't want to be there? Or do you need to say the old house? I feel like I go live in the new house. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. All right, so then I go back to the old house. Someone else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's like we're trying to go, you know, back to an old home, and somebody else has already moved in, or it's just, you know, it's vacant with someone else's fear. So it's like, oh, well, 
this doesn't feel right either. So it's kind of like what Michael said. We've got one foot in the old house, one foot in the new house, or the old path and the new path. And we're kind of in the middle here. And that's, that's actually how I've been seeing it. I did a session earlier today and we were visualizing doing this in a little bit of a different way than we're doing now. But this is what's been coming up in my sessions is to kind of ask people to figure it out. So for him, we were looking at the old earth and the new earth and it's like we had to jump over and I always kind of see myself and a lot of people I work with, it's kind of like we're in the middle between the old and the new. And so, and that's okay, right? Like no pressure, <laughs> I mean, you know, this is a process. It's, it really isn't a big leap or what, or could it be, right? Because aren't we already in the new place anyway? And we just have to kind of get our minds and our bodies caught up. So, you know, I kind of keep coming back to the part of, you know, we, those of us who've been on a path like this for a while, it's like, we kind of feel like, oh, you know, healing's a process and it takes a long time to have to move through all my stuff. And, you know, um, I, you know, I've been working on this for a long time and trying and, you know, this, this stuff comes out of my mouth all the time. And it's like, well, if, if we're already in the new, right, if we're really operating, you know, cause linear time's just a construct of the reality in which we exist in. But if we're moving into a place new, like, why can't we all just you know, sync up to it now. And I kind of think we can. It's just we, we, our beliefs aren't totally on board. So Sonia went to La La Land, feel a little lighter, but not sure since I can't remember since I was not here. <laughs> yeah, typical. <laughs> so, and you know, to that note, Sonia, like, do not worry that, um, like, if you didn't follow along or you didn't, you know, weren't part of the whole process, it doesn't matter. Wherever you went is fine. You know, that's actually a great uh, example of just surrendering and allowing, you know, whatever happened to happen. So if you feel inclined, you can listen to this portion again. We started this, um, I started recording, I think it right about 6.30 and, or 6.35. And then we started this, you know, about, about 30 minutes in, 35 minutes in. So if you want to play again, it'll be made available to you. So, okay. Well, um, we are right at 7.37. So... We're gonna move into the next place. And again, this is gonna be the place of creation. So as clear as we are able to get right now, let's just all step into that clarity. And again, I haven't, I haven't um, done this before. So I'm just, we're, you know, I'm just trusting. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of prep work for this kind of call. Cause it's just like, oh, put a call on. It's like, oh, okay. And it's like, if I sat here and like outlined everything that I was gonna do, um, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think it's supposed to work that way anymore. So it, it's, you know, back to we're really being guided to just allow and flow and trust and whatever comes through, comes through. And hopefully it, it's, you know, perfect for everybody. <sighs> okay, so let's go back to muting everybody. And all right, so... um. All right, so you guys know the drill. Let's sit back and take some deep breaths. Um, and let's just all set the intention. We're in our new homes, in our new paths. So even if it doesn't feel 100% true, we're just going with it. And I want you to, to Breathe as you were and move into that power of that choice. I choose to know that I am powerful to step into this new place. I choose to remember and, and embody that I am a powerful creator. Powerful beyond measure. I choose to trust that it is safe for me to create and to be in my power. I choose to allow myself to surrender. And so in the creation of my desires, as I move into choice and creation, I know that if I surrender and let go, once I consciously choose my desires, that they will come into fruition. 
that I don't need to control them. So just take a few breaths to receive all of that. And we're gonna ask that everything's still in the way of that, just kind of clear through your field. Any part of your mind that does not believe that to be true, I'm asking all of that just to kind of soften, relax, and just move into your knowing. This is not about your thinking, this is about your knowing. This is about your higher mind beginning to take root into this new place. So let's all actually set an intention for our higher mind to come in and be active and online. There's a lot of energy in the head. So anything in the way of you receiving your higher mind, any part of you that really wants to keep, you know, connected into your logic and into your rational and into the but what ifs and you know, what would happen if I let go and, you know, how can I trust myself? So everything that is not, you know, in alignment with your new, expansive, intuitive, higher, all-knowing mind, asking all that to just kind of soften, relax. And I just want you to imagine that, like we talked about earlier, your brain's like this, you know, computer. And so we've just wiped the whole hard drive clean. We've even completely wiped out the operating system. And now we're bringing in a whole new operating system. The one that does not have any belief in limitation the operating system that allows for pure creation. And the other thing I've been seeing, and I want you to imagine this, it's like our brains and our bodies are now being rewired. Um, it's like not only are we in this new operating system, but we have a whole new like circuit board, a whole new uh, electrical circuitry. So if you can imagine what your body looks like and its meridians, its chakras, its you know pathways, it's like there's a whole network and that old network has actually gone offline. And there's a new, whole new network, whole new system that comes in and we're flipping the switch. Another way to look at this is like, we have the blueprint of our old home and we just kind of throw that away, we burn it up and then we're spreading out the whole new blueprint of our new reality, the whole template of our new body, our new life, our new existence and turning on that new template. Ooh, that's a lot of energy there. Just kind of see everything kind of lit up, lit up. Your whole electrical system, your energy system. All right. And again, I want you to see yourselves on this new earth. On, in this new home, in this now, you've got this new body. So you're now sitting on a blank slate, a brand new foundation. And here you are with a whole whiteboard in front of you, which is just your imagination. And you're going to begin to construct your new creations. You're going to um, consciously 
create the desires that you've been wanting. So you can do this with pictures, you can do this with feelings, you can create you know, something in your home life, in your business life, in your money life, in your love life, in your, in your body, in your money. And so before you get started, I want you to imagine that as you're creating this, you're actually not even creating it because everything that you're choosing to desire or create in this moment is actually already in existence in an alternate timeline. So because you can desire it, it already exists. So I want you to kind of imagine that you're looking and maybe let's take the whiteboard away and let's actually bring in a window. And through this window, as you begin to create, you see your life playing out in this whole other timeline. Like it's you, but not quite you yet because it's that timeline and you're still in this timeline. So go ahead and, and start to view your timeline and you can build it and create it from the ground up. And I'll give you maybe just like one or two minutes to do that. And I'll be quiet because I'm going to do it too. And as you're creating, I just want you to notice if any limitations come up for you, I want you to just acknowledge that that, that doesn't exist in this timeline. So just pay attention to those. We can table those for later. But you have this magic wand of this alternate timeline, and there is no limitations to what you can create here. No exceptions, no qualifications, no conditions limitless. And so as you see all this playing out, I want you to really feel what it feels like for this timeline to be in existence in each situation. How much money do you have in the bank? How do you feel? How does your body feel? What emotions do you experience when you wake up in the morning? See the look on your face in this other reality and notice how happy and light and carefree you are.
All right. So I want you to just, again, see this all happening in this window in front of you. And it's like, the way I've been seeing this is, you know, we have all sorts of different scenarios and timelines that can play out based on the decisions that we make or even if there's let's say a hundred different you know versions of us happening in different realities let's just say so this what you just created is a reality that's already in existence right it's not something in the future it is actually in a parallel timeline so I know we're going a little sci-fi here so just bear with me but I want you to go ahead and open that window and I want you to see yourself standing on the other side and everything that was just created. See this happy, healthy, joyous, powerful, light-filled, authentic being that is you in that timeline. And I want to, that, that version of you is going to hold its hand or hold their hand out and help you through that window. So it's a big window. It's easy to step through. <laughs> Maybe a sliding glass door because we can create anything. So I want you to step into this reality, step into this timeline. I want you to come face to face with yourself. You might even have some words to that version of you, like, man, you live an awesome life. Just loved seeing everything that you have been doing. I loved how you felt, how you feel every day. It was just so much fun, you know, watching everything that you experience in your life. I just loved, it. you know, I loved observing that. And so as you face this version of you, I want you to just say, you know what? I'm realizing that I can just step into this now and we can merge as one because we are the same. So however this is going to work for you, I want you to imagine that that version of you and that timeline you created is now just becoming whole and one with you now as you are now stepped into and anchored into this new timeline. <coughs> and every part of you in resistance to that, we're just gonna send some energy your way to help really bring you into this. And so as you step into this new timeline and as you merge with yourself, I want you to feel in your belly, in your abdomen, this kind of fiery, powerful, creative energy, okay? This is like you, your belief in yourself and your ability to choose anything you want your ability to create timelines that are already into existence and step into them, your ability to merge into this reality that you are creating and remembering and embodying that you have the power to do so. So just kind of feel all that in your belly. It's like, I just can't emphasize enough to you guys that, you are this powerful, okay? This is like, you know, this sounds kind of corny, but like this is like your birthright. I don't like really believe in destiny, but it's kind of like, because you choose, right? But this is, if you choose this, this is, you know, like the, oh, what's the word? This is like your place of pure potential, right? You get to create from your desires and the potential of what you're desiring and manifest that into creation. Like 
I, I just want you to really feel the power of that. And again, there's some responsibility that goes with it because it's like, you know, you can just say, screw it. I don't want to be a conscious creator. I'm just going to go back to my old home and my old shoes and my old reality and just maybe go back to bed. And you can do that, right? No judgment because that might be the perfect thing for you to do. But, you know, you join this call. So I'm kind of thinking that's not what you want to do. <laughs> so, um, so just come on back and, and be with this new merged version of yourself. And we'll come back in our new timelines. Oh, we're, we're all in like this new timeline together now. How cool is that? We all created a new timeline and stepped into it and we're still together. <laughs> so um, I'll unmute and see how y'all experience that. Anybody want to share? Well, I felt really great. I jumped right into my new path right before you even told me to. Nice. Is this, is this Christine? Christine, yes. Yeah. Christine. So, and, so was that even before the timeline thing or? I got into the timeline and then I was ready to get on into meet up with the timeline before you even told me to. Cool. How did it feel when you were already in there? Uh, powerful. <laughs> awesome. And how did the how did clearing the wounds go for you? Uh, it went okay. Uh, I didn't really notice. I guess they disappeared. So you you enjoyed the creative process more. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and you know that. You know what's so cool about that is, you know, I think there's a point where we, we, we won't even have to go back and clean out those storage anymore. So it's not that like, oh, all of a sudden there's nothing that needs attention, you know, like there's zero fear and zero unworthiness. But when it does come up, we can be aware of it and move through it, you know, almost instantaneously with our attention. So then we can just, you know, take a five minute break from creation and be like, oh, let me go ahead and you know, give some attention to this old part of me that still wants to, you know, be in fear. And, okay, now I can go back to my creation. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for coming. Anyone else want to share? Um, part of the something that came up for me was uh, when I did see that person the mindset of that person was completely different. It was um, more of everything was helping this person out. It wasn't as if, you know, they were doing everything themselves. Mm. There was a big community behind this energy. It wasn't just one thing. Yeah. It was as if the universe wanted that to happen. Mm. <laughs> That's awesome. That's huge. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. yeah. Cause I think that there's such that strong energy of us feeling like we have to do it all ourselves. And it's, that's such a lie that we've bought into and it's yeah. so not serving us anymore. So I'm so happy to hear you saw that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, I was like, how did you do all this? And it wasn't, he didn't say, you know, I did all this. It was, they wanted it to be like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Very. Thanks for sharing. Yes, that feels good. Funny. Yeah, I was like, that's like, oh. <laughs> yes. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Can and can all of us on this call uh, receive a little bit of that? Because that's a big one. You know, it's like we, you know, we create these desires and this timeline or whatever, and we're like, well, I have no idea how that could even happen. I can't even conceive of how I could accomplish that. And that's exactly what we don't want to do. But I, I was catching myself, my, I was catching myself doing that. And I was like, no, stop. Like you have a magic wand. You don't have to worry about the how anymore. Right. This is the surrender piece. So yay. Rock on. Anyone else want to share? Okay. 
Okay. Well, I, I had more. Um, I had more probably issues coming up with the creation part. I had a, a, a lot of clarity with um, you know the core, um, the woundedness that came up, and that that was more evident. But I guess whenever I was in the creation part, it's almost like you know, oh, well, yeah. you're too greedy or, you know, or, or, you know, you don't deserve that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, so what you, what I would recommend your homework to be, is that Michelle? Yes. Yeah. So what I would give you for homework is to practice this every day. And as you're practicing, uh -huh. write down all those beliefs that mm -hmm. yep. oh this is selfish this is greedy this isn't possible i don't deserve this what about other people how will people judge me do i right mean? yeah so because because what what you can do is you can kind of flip flop so by by moving first into creation you can really mm -hmm. easily see the wounds you can easily see the blocks. okay and so write those okay. down and then, you know, I know you have a whole toolbox of things that you work with. So whatever works for you, you know, you can, um, you know, go back to what we did earlier in the call with working with your body. But I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure you have some tools with your, all your skills. Um, mm -hmm. But that'll give you just a real clear indication on a consistent basis of what's in your way. Um, and there's another book. Have you, uh, read the book, the, I think I even told John about this. I did. Um, and I'm going to send it to him. I have an audible. Um, it's called the placebo effect. by Joe uh -huh. And what he did is he got in a really horrific accident and you know, he needed to have surgery. Otherwise he was going to be paralyzed and all this stuff. Well, then he basically created his health through meditation, through some of the exercises that we just did. But same thing, like if he would go and begin to create the, the situation where he could walk again or rebuild his practice or blah, 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 then he'd have all those doubts come in or judgments or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So what he would do is he would then immediately start to work through those. Okay, what is greedy? You know, what is it to be greedy? Well, it means to be selfish. And, you know, what does that selfish means? It means um, I... I care about myself more than others. Well, is that a bad thing? Well, no, because I kind of feel like I should take care of myself before others. Okay, well then what is that selfish thing? Am I worried about what people think about me? Yes, okay, so there's the judgment. I'm feeling like if I, you know, if I care for myself first then people are gonna judge me, and what does that feel like? Well, I don't like when people judge me because it makes me feel bad about myself, and then, you know, I'm not feeling like, you know, I'm loved, right? So you can kind of take that greedy and start to work it all the way down, um, and so when he would go to do these creation meditations of rebuilding his body, he would work through all that stuff that was coming up and then go back and start with the creation again. So like I said, for you, for your homework, if you can start that whole experience of whatever it is you want to create, you'll get really clear signposts of what your blocks are, you know, and then, and then write those down and then work on those. Okay. Yeah. And it's like anything, you know, like, so obviously this old, because it was harder for you to create, you might need to spend a little more attention here first. And then like Christy was saying like, Oh, well, that wasn't, wasn't feeling as much. I was, I could really get into that creation. And when you go, when you go to create and you go to create the timeline and step into that, it'll be way easier. Okay. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Um, yes. Yeah, thank you. And I'm going to send that book to John because there's some good examples in there on that. That might help you too. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Christy. Uh, or other Christy. Yeah, working through the doubts. Yeah, it's huge because, you know, again, back to, you know, I was feeling your solar plexus at the end there. Like, oh, I just I don't really feel right about creating this. Or I'm just not really feeling powerful enough to do this or whatever it is. That's the doubts, right? That's the core wounds that are still in existence. So that gives you a really clear indicator of what needs attention. I'm not feeling worthy. I'm scared to do this. And, and like I was saying with Michelle, you can take something like greedy and start to ask why 
and start to bring that down into a core wound. Core wounds are typically fear, unworthiness, you know, there's some shame around that too. But like feeling selfish is kind of the manifestation of a core wound. So see if you can kind of start up here with the greedy or whatever else you're feeling and bring it all the way down into something similar. But you want to look for the deeper energy there is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, so you saw a thousand petal lotus of your head. Awesome. Yeah, I, when I, was, I was feeling the crown energy a lot with that. Um, so it's like, yeah, we're creating with the higher self. We're creating with the, you know, the, the soul spirit aspect. And we're creating with God, right? Like, we're the co-creators of God. Like, we are the creators. And we just kind of, like, forgot. <laughs> so we got to clear all the stuff that's preventing that. So awesome. Thanks for sharing, Christy. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. So I just got instructed to pull some cards. <laughs> she did say please, but she's a little bossy. <laughs> um, so I actually have my friend's deck with me, which is the Ascended Masters deck. So yeah, I'll pull one for the group. And then I got to hustle because my husband's traveling and my six-year-old, I don't know if you guys noticed, but he totally came in. I'm like, when we were beginning the, um, the first part, I was like, get out. He's like, I'm bored. And I'm like, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> you are bossy. Okay. So I'm just going to pull a couple of cards for the group and Michael, I'll send you one offline. All right. So... I was getting just to do three quick cards for everyone here and for the energies that we just worked through. So as you know, we're all connected. So here's one, here's two, and three. Okay. So interesting. Okay. So the first card we got um, is the twin flame. So Doreen Virtue is the creator of these cards, and she always tends to write about a twin flame being the romantic part, being like your romantic soulmate, and all like, oh, I just can't wait to meet my twin flame. It's going to be so romantic. And I kind of just feel like that's not true, <laughs> like maybe in some situations, but twin flames tend to be like the counterpart of our soul. But what I, why I feel like this showed up for us today is back to Michael's um, what he perceived in his creation is we're not alone, right? And whether it's a twin flame, a legion of angels, um, you know, our human friends, you know, the community, um, to me, this is actually saying like, you are never doing this alone ever. And so, you know, let go of that belief and let go of that control. And again, back to the energy of surrendering. So, um, that's what I'm really feeling here is like, you know, we do have the support and it's a support from, you know, yeah, we get our family support and friend support, but this feels like the support from the higher realms. And if you look, he's got some, um, like doves above his head and he's, I don't know what the geese, the goose is. I don't really know who he is. And guess, um, but if you see, he's kind of looking upwards and it's like, yeah, so you know, for lack of a better term, like it's really accepting. Oh, thank you, Swan. <laughs> That's way cooler. Um, but it's accepting heaven's help. Okay. Um, the next one is take part of this situation and it's Moses. Here's Moses like parting the waters here. Um, and to me, for us, sorry, this is about that energy of being responsible for what you're creating. Okay. Take charge of your choices. You are not a victim of your experience. Your life is up to you and anywhere your life is uncomfortable, it's reflecting back those doubts and those wounds and, and knowing that you have the power and you've got the um, know how, right? You guys know how to work through this stuff. We just did it. So if you, um, are not consciously creating and you're not taking responsibility for what's, what your life is experiencing, you're kind of missing out. So, <laughs> so again, you could go back in that old house and take a nap. Like I'm totally not judging you for that. I love you anyway, but 
if, <laughs> but if you want to, you know, step into this creative part, this is saying like, you can take charge of this, right? The power of the choice and the power of the desire and the power of the attention that you give it. And again, you know, I'm talking to myself through all this because I, I spend, you know, not nearly enough time. I'll sit down with my journal and write down things that I want, but I really feel like I should do this like every day, if not, you know, maybe every other day, but it might be like once a week. Um, I am doing like more meditations and things around that, but sometimes I feel like writing it down and writing it down in gratitude and, you know, as if, right, that timeline already is in existence, right? Our creations are not future. They are now. That was kind of the point. I really wanted to drill home tonight, but it's my responsibility to create mine now. So that's it. Take charge of this situation. I know you guys probably, oh, look, who's that? Yeah, you see that backwards, don't you? Um, and then lastly is follow your heart. We've got the lamb and the doves and that's at St. Francis of Assisi. And again, um, looking up and kind of having that heavenly guidance of these like dove birds come in. And so why I feel like this comes up is, you know, to your comment, Michelle, about being greedy, it's like your desires, they're not greedy because they do come from your heart, right? It's the beliefs that, that we got implanted with, right? Those old programs that are in that, you know, hard, hard drive space that are, we're now cleaning out. Okay. Bye Christy. Um, your desires for what you want do come from your heart, right? But they come from you. Bless you. Um, so the follow your heart and the take charge right next to each other is saying like your desires and your creation and your choices are from the heart, right? I mean, unless you're like setting out to do harm to somebody else, which I know nobody on this call is doing, like your desires are perfect. They're absolutely perfect. They're your desires. They come from you and you are perfect. And so just, I, I think that's just, um, you know, this came through to share that and, and know that those doubts and those qualifying, you know, thoughts that we have about not deserving it or, you know, judging ourselves for our desires. Cause that's really it. Like anywhere you're judging your desire. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah anywhere you're judging yourself, know that that like, because it comes from you, it does come from a heart space. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Yeah. Cause you know, we're all, part of the oneness we're all part of the unity and so we're, we're, we are coming from that heart space so our desires are actually pure we're just we were taught as kids like you know you don't want that you know you're being selfish you know all the things you have to think of others before you think of yourself and then we know what kind of trouble that gets us into right mm -hmm. we just start absorbing everyone else's problems and forget about ourselves and we know all about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's where we need to pick up some empath books <laughs> yeah. and Sonia says it is time for us yes it is you know how can we serve the world if we don't serve ourselves first right it is we got to put the, act the oxygen mask on us before our kids we have to make sure our cup is full before we can shine it out to the world um, you know, when we operate from an empty space, you know, we, we're not able to serve in the way that we best can. So, um, you know, if we're so busy taking care of others and don't really fully, you know, get into our hearts, we don't really know what's potential, what are, what we're capable of, you know, it can be so much more mm -hmm. and it can affect so many more people. So all right, folks, that's it for the night. Um, thank you guys all. Thank you for your contribution and participation. I, I really felt some good energy moving. And, and as you guys probably know, drink a lot of water. You know, sometimes this stuff can take a couple days to kind of shift through and process. But I really am so grateful for everybody because, you know, we, we all, not, we, we didn't just participate here. You guys all contributed. So thank you, thank you. And, um, Oh, thanks, Christy. Yeah, wonderful. All right. Thanks, Kayla. Mwah. I hope to see you guys soon. Yeah. All right. Lots Thank of love. You. All right. I'll send the recording. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Again.